Good morning. Good morning. And how are you today? I'm very well, thank you. I understand you do poetry. I do indeed. That's fantastic. And what is your name? My name is Steve Orham, known as Steve O. What's the O for? Orham. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> and are you a local man? Very much so. Timbeth? Um, King Scarisworth and Torquay. OK. I've, I've lived in Devon all my life. Is that a village? Yes, indeed. OK. Would you like to say one of your lovely poems? I only know one from memory. It's called Dra Granny's Got a Jetpack. Well, sounds good. Granny's got a jetpack she uses on occasions. She hasn't got a head for height. She sometimes needs persuasion. Granny went and bought it at an auction in Devizes. It's lucky that it fits her as they come in many sizes. Granny's biggest worry is being mistaken for a drone. She got shot down at Gatwick when she tried to hurry home. On Granny's use of airspace, she's always an apologist, and many of her recent flights have startled ornithologists. When Granny goes and snuffs it, she's nearly 97. The angels won't be needed. She'll just jet back into heaven. Well done. Good Clap, morning. everyone. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. That is so good. And you made that up yourself. Everything I do... Usually is written by myself, yeah. Yeah. Have you always done poetry? Only for the last five years. Um, what I'm a set it off? Frustrated musician. Oh, are you? Because I can't play anything. Oh, right. <laughs> but I can't sing. So I found late in life... Oh, that's marvellous. ...that I perform uh, my daft poetry. But how did you actually come across finding it? I gave you a card. I always thought of um, music, um, lyrics and um, couldn't write songs so I ended up having words that I found there was an area where I could perform. Well you've certainly done very well. Thank you. Have you had any published? Not yet. Uh, uh, the, uh, the lockdown thwarted me somewhat. Yeah. And have you gone into any competitions where you can win? I've done poetry slams. I did one at the Phoenix in Exeter. Oh, did you? Which was quite interesting. And I've also headlined an internet show for big poetry. Yeah. Um, so, um, yes, uh, there's a lot of very good performance poets in South Devon. Is there? Um, have you got another poem for today, please? I certainly have. I'll have to read this That's one. That's absolutely fine. Um, I no problem with that at all. do have my, oh. my prop. <laughs> this is the history of magic from a rabbit's perspective. My great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-grandfather was very persistent. He asked a magician to be his assistant. He was given the gig because he was weaning, so he ended up working for Harry Houdini. He practised his act. He was never a spoiler. It was once said he wasn't a bunny toiler. He basked in the fame. He was never an apologist. He was honoured to work with that great escapologist. To work with the master, he never had fears. His only pronouncement was, don't touch the ears. My great, 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 great grandfather had a job which was super. He was the stooge for the great Tommy Cooper. The two of them got into all sorts of stews, but it was only a fez that they were both going through. They basked in the laughter, they never had jeers. His only retort was, don't touch the ears. I continue to uphold the family tradition and I'm currently employed by a famous magician. To be pulled from the hat is a predictable habit, but a labour of love for my family of rabbits. It's been worth it all for the smiles, not the tears. And I say to the boss, just don't touch the ears. <laughs> very, very good. And you wrote that yourself. I did. And I've got one more. No, that's fine. You um, carry on. I'd like to give you. Please do. Um, there was a short story attached to this. OK. A very good DJ in Newton Abbott for Riviera um, Radio, Mike Abbott, okay. sent me a challenge a few years ago. He said Newton Abbott had been voted the sexiest town in Devon wow. due to an internet sale of sex toys. And could I <laughs> write a poem on it? And this has become Newton Abbott's unofficial town anthem. OK. Sexy town. Nestled between the sea and moors, it's stunning what's behind closed doors. Our market town just fits the bill. Most of us don't need blue pills. A place where no one's gagged and bound. No, Newton Abbott, sexy town. 
we try and make the indoors fun great exercise for everyone the condom firms think we're fantastic for all our use of pro elastics a place where maidens do a bow no Newton Abbott sexy town there's lots of sheep near Newton Abbott but people here just copy rabbits pleasure for all the girls and boys with subtle use of certain toys Late at night you hear strange sounds. That's Newton Abbott, sexy town. Oh, no. Now the hottest spot in Devon, famous as a carnal heaven. Shout with pride across the land, in Newton we will make a stand. A place that adds more ups than downs. That's Newton Abbott, sexy, sexy town. <laughs> no, thank you. Marvellous. Thank you so much. How long does it take you to do write a poem like that? When I'm inspired, about five minutes. OK. Oh, really? But unfortunately, during the lockdown, I've only written about three. Have you? Haven't been inspired I then? No, I, because I didn't want to write any... I mean, I can write a few serious ones. I've got one short serious one, if you want it. Yes, I think we can move to a different part in the record shop, this record <laughs> shop in Timmouth. It's SPS. And you buy all your finals here, don't you? Oh, I do indeed. It's yeah, so... certainly the best record shop in Devon, and I've been collecting yeah. records for 50 years. Um, I don't do many serious ones because everybody needs a bit of cheering up. But this one was written specially for a dear friend who had one of those rubbish years yeah. with lots of bereavement and other bits and pieces. OK. He, what can you say to someone who's you know had so much trouble? And I'm not a religious person, but this is the nearest I get to it. And this is written specifically for anybody in bad times. Is it very sentimental, this? No. Oh, OK. Carry on then, please, <laughs> Steve. Try and find the light. It's human to have demons, and the darkness is a fight, and the blackness can surround you, and you'll never find the light. Days are rarely easy, and it's often endless night, but you've got to keep on going and find that distant light. Opinions are just shady greys, they're rarely black and white. But try and keep an open mind, you might see different lights. Life will bring you times of loss, and grief will always bite. But hopefully with your beliefs you'll see a shining light. And in the end, I've no idea, I've not got second sight. All I hope, with fingers crossed, I'll step into the light. That's ex excellent, excellent. That's excellent, Steve. Shall we move to a different part of the shop now? It's a little shop, well, fairly little, but it's very busy and very popular here, isn't it, in Timber? It certainly is. And it's kind of Matthew to allow us to do this in here it's today. It's very, very good of him indeed. Right. Have you got any more poems you'd like to share? I'll just do one that I haven't performed for ages. Oh, that's good then. Um, this is... The price incompetent witch finders pay. Okay. There once was a witch finder general who wasn't that good at his job. He rarely burnt witches and warlocks, so his earnings were only a few bob. He'd replaced the famed Matthew Hopkins, who always knew which witch was which. But the new man named Marmaduke Simpkins, at his trolls there was always a hitch. Now Marmy was nervous with ladies, and also allergic to cats. He'd rarely been familiar with pussies, and never if furry or black. Poor Simkin was sent to North Devon. There'd been reports of black magic there, but when he arrived at Holsworthy, he started to lose all his hair. He developed the stut -stu -stu and a very peculiar rash. Red spots were now seen on his forehead, and the toilet he frequently dashed. I think that I have been cursed. I feel so, so cold and then hot. Then Marmy then fell in a stupor. When wakened, he was inside a pot. For there, in a large witch's cauldron, the coven had achieved quite a coup. Marmoshake, magistrate Simpkins, was turned into a witch finder's stew. <laughs> <laughs> And concluding very clever. this cornucopia of intellectual delights, yeah, the very nice um, boss, proprietor of the record TV shop, there. challenged me to write one about record fans. Okay. And I'll conclude 
with greatest fan. I am the band's greatest fan. I've even got their old tour van. And on my drive it proudly stands. I am their greatest fan. I've seen them dance with a crepe band can twice. I follow them to Hindustan. Of all their tapes from the Buddha can, I am their greatest fan. I've seen their famous acoustic set. And when they went naked for a groupie's bet, and when they stole that Boeing jet, I am their greatest fan. I've seen them jam at Sutton Who, and when Abba joined them at Waterloo, when they replaced their guitars with didgeridoos, I am their greatest fan. I've all their records and CDs, and most are signed upon the sleeves, and tapes of gigs you won't believe, I am their greatest fan. Look, I've got this acetate, and the keyboard player's floral cape, and a piece of roadie gaffer tape, I am their greatest fan. I've got now 90 banjo picks, I've got pictures of them being sick, I don't know why you take the mick, I am their greatest fan. The discs, they're hung up on my walls, I wouldn't wish to play them all. The computer's at my beck and call, I am their greatest fan. And when I leave this mortal coil, my rival collectors I will foil. All burnt with me, their blood will boil, I am their greatest fan. I thank you. <laughs> that was Steve. That was excellent. Well, that was marvellous, Steve. Thank you so much for sharing your poems with us. Thank you. And I hope you will continue to share some more. I certainly will. Have you got any more at home? I've got plenty. OK, so look forward to the next time. Indeed, I'm more than happy to uh, perform again. Do you perform for anyone personally? If you, do you want to give a phone number if somebody wants you to perform at a wedding or somewhere? <laughs> yes, in the future. I can be contacted. Have you got um, a phone number, please? I have on 01803 874216. And this is the great Steve O. Thank you. Thank you so much, Steve. Very entertaining. In Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.